October baseball is what it's all about. And you're seeing this right now. And the Giants were right there for the longest time this year. They were, they, they, remember the show we did where they were half a game out of the wild card and none of you guys cared? This could be, who knows once you get there? Who knows when a fan base gets behind you and they start singing songs and you can start to get a thing? Every team that wins the World Series has a thing. And all these teams that won all the games during the regular season, especially the analytically driven teams, analytics works for six months. I lived it. I was part of Moneyball. I know this. When you have the, 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 the edge and you have the right matchups and you do the same thing for six months, it plays out. If you have the talent and you make the right moves and you make the same moves, it's a formula. It works. You're going to win games. But then when you get into the postseason, it's about momentum. It's about belief in yourself. It's about confidence in yourself. It's about feeding off the energy of your city, of your region. And it's about the manager having feel. Because for a three-game series or a five-game series, there's not enough time for analytics to play out. So what you're seeing is these teams that win 100 games, that, that blow away the division, that have all the momentum, and then they sit around for seven days. Baseball is not meant to sit around for seven days. It's not. It's an everyday thing. It's a rhythm. It's a flow. You're winning. You do the champagne thing. What also happens, too, is you clinch the division too soon. You take your foot off the gas, and you play out the last two weeks of the season kind of like, ah, not, I don't want to say half ass, but without the same intensity. And then you get seven days off, and then you're supposed to gear up, and it just doesn't work that way. That's why you see the Dodgers who are decimated with their pitching staff, and that's why you see the Braves who are decimated with their pitching staff. So there, there are reasons. But then you have teams like the Diamondbacks that are in the groove. They have the confidence. They did the champagne. They, they, they have the vibe. They have the feel. All the intangible things that the card in the back of your pocket can't compute. Then here's the Phillies with the fan base. And whatever you think about Philadelphia fans, I'll put them up against anybody. And that's not to offend anybody out there. But when their team is winning, that's, a, that's, that's the most passionate fan base in all of sports when their team is winning. And it goes both ways. If they're losing, they're going to let you know, and it's hard to play there. But right now, what you're seeing, there's no other place like that, even New York, even Boston. There's no, I mean, what they're doing right now and the reaction. Did you see, Raph, can you dig this up? You don't have to do it right now. But this, this soundless Bryce Harper home run last night, it was his first home run, and it was all over Instagram, it was all over Twitter today. Of He just did a sound, it was just no sound home run. And, and, and I don't know, I mean, as a broadcaster, like I, I, I would never say I don't want broadcasters because, you know, I, I think that, that Kipe and Crook and Dave and John add so much to a broadcast. But every once in a while, every once in a while, and especially in a big situation with a packed house and a playoff scenario, no sound is better than sound, meaning no broadcaster sound is better than sound. Have you ever have you ever been 808 KMBR? Where are you? Call me right now. I want to hear your stories. Have you ever been a part of just an absolute like lose your mind fan frenzy moment in the stands in any sport where you literally blacked out? I've had one of those in, like in the last 4 years where you're cheering so loud, you're going so nuts the world started spinning and I almost went down and it was when Howie Kendrick hit the grand slam against the Dodgers, in the NLDS in 2019. And I wasn't in the, the you know, is it, it, you're not in the booth. The, the national takes over. So I was just doing pregame and postgame and I was in the stands in the family section and I literally almost went down. I started seeing stars. I was like, yeah, it's like, you, you know, when you blow up the raft and you're blowing up the raft too much and you're blowing up the raft too fast. 
and then all of a sudden you start to see stars. That that that's what I went through, and I'm, I'm literally it was like the, I mean, remember my jogging story from about a month ago when I almost went down. It was just like that. But like I want to hear your stories, whether it was a Giants game in ten, twelve, or fourteen, whether it was a 49ers game and and Dwight Clark making the catch in the end zone. Like if you were a fan, like your best playoff moment. Or your best fan moment. It doesn't have to be playoffs. But don't you miss it? Don't you guys miss this? Like, especially Giants fans. Like, you were there in 2021. I, I get it. You had, you had the the playoffs in 2021. But damn, this is fun, man. This is what it's all about. Like, literally, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm a big league manager, I'm, I'm playing the Bryson Stott Grand Slam without sound. And I'm playing the Bryce Harper home run last night without sound. I'm playing the Nick Castellanos double home run game, back-to-back games without sound for my team in the clubhouse in spring training, no matter what team I'm on. And I'm saying this is what it's all about. It's not about your average. It's not about your ERA. It's not about how many runs you drive in or what your OPS is. It's not about your launch angle. It's not about your exit velocity. Cut to the tape. This is what it's all about right here. This is what it's all about. This is what we're playing for. And if we do this and we experience this, everything takes care of itself. We all get paid. We all get what we need. We all get what we deserve. But this is like, I've been watching intently, but this is the first night where it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I miss it. Nothing like October baseball. Nothing like being in a clubhouse where guys are losing their mind. They're dancing to the song that, that got them there that was their after-the-game song all year. They're doing interviews with goggles on. They're acting like 10-year-olds, and they're going to the next round. There's so much pressure involved in this that when you finally get there and you finally achieve that goal, it's time to celebrate. It's time to let loose. Tori Lovello last night saying, I'm just going <laughs> to... I think he said I, something about, like, I'm going to go on a bender was his exact words. Like, that's what it's about. There, when you win in October, there's no rules. You're it, not, I mean, you can't go out and murder somebody. You're not that above the law, but there's no rules. You can swear, like, remember Timmy? Lincecum was dropping F-bombs everywhere. Doesn't matter. You're winning. You're winning. When you win, you can do whatever you want. And it's colorful, and it's cute, and it's funny. And you drop an F-bomb, and you look at your 7-year-old, like, hey, well, they're winning. He can say whatever he wants. I mean, that's how it goes. All right, let's go to the phones. They're lighting up right now. I inspired you guys to call the show. You guys are amazing. Uh, let me see. I got two soccer games on here. Let's go to Pablo in San Francisco. Pablo, start us yeah. off tonight. Oh, man, it was a great evening. Uh, it was a wonderful broadcast so far. I love hearing what you got to say. Um, you know, I caught the tail end of the Chiefs game, but you brought up a great memory that I have with my family. Last game ever at Candlestick. It is a soccer game. Peru versus Mexico. Peru is down. Um, uh, you know, they're fighting their way back. They block a free kick, and me and my my family were Peruvian. We lose our minds. I mean, we're a static in the stands and that's what sports are all about i mean those moments where it just brings you to another level and you really just reminded me of that wonderful feeling the way you colored it up man i really appreciate what you said and and all the things you've got to bring uh to the airwaves and uh yeah just want to share that story i don't know who was there peru versus mexico candlestick park what a way to end it but, that, but pablo that's your memory and it's always yeah. there. And if you're having a bad day, it's in a Tupperware. You just crack that Tupperware open. You think about it, it brings a smile to your face. You're hugging strangers. You're screaming. It's almost primal when you're screaming and jumping up and down and hugging people you don't know. It, it's just, it's what, it, to me, it's what October baseball is all about. And it's what sports is all about. For sure, for sure. And luckily for me, I got a digital Tupperware. Uh, I was live on my on my phone and I, I go back and I look at it every now and then. It brings goosebumps. Um, you know, uh, just another great memory I had at the stick. And you're right, man. Nothing like October baseball at all. At all. Wish we can make it back soon. Um, still rooting for Boach. Go ahead, Boach. Do your thing. Dusty, may the best uh, former Giants manager <laughs> have it. All right, Pablo. Thanks. Good call to start it up. I appreciate it, Pablo. Have a, have a great night. Let's Brother. go. Let's go to... 
Where are we going, Fred in San Francisco? Oh, blackout at the game. I thought the game was blacked out. Fred, did you black out at a game? I wouldn't say I blacked out, but I have I have two of these with just insane moments. Well, One, shoot. The, the second best was probably when uh, Terrell Owens caught that touchdown against Packers. Owens, and Owens, after, Owens. After dropping everything that day, Everything that went to him, he dropped it, went right to his hands, and he catches the most impossible one at the best possible time. But I think the best, the best moment is still, and I, I challenge anybody to come up with a better one in the history of this country. I was at the USA-Soviet Union hockey game in 1980. Oh, you win? End of story. <laughs> you're in Lake Placid, you're at the game? I was at the game. I, I was 23 years old. I snuck in. I couldn't find a ticket, so I snuck in. Wow. So you, you're at Miracle on Ice. One yeah. of, maybe the greatest sporting event in the history of our country. I, I couldn't disagree. College kids was- against the Red Army Russian hockey team that was going around exhibition, beating NHL All-Stars 8 to nothing. They, right. boat, they boat raced the college kids in a couple exhibition games. Like, it was the biggest uh, mismatch in the history of the Olympics and they found a way to pull it off. I, I was 14 years old. I, I remember this like it was yesterday, and I'll never forget it. It was yeah, unbelievable. Well, the, the stadium, 8,000 people, sounded like 150,000 people. It was an absolute frenzy. And when Aruzioni scored the go-ahead goal, I've never heard a place quite so loud in my life. And then, surprisingly, followed by silence. Because people it hit everybody at the same time. Ten minutes to go. We got this. Can we keep this? It was probably everybody was nervous and had anxiety. And like, there's no way. There's too much time on the clock. There's no way this happens. And and then and then it was just like, was it a random USA chance? Just lighten up the arena the rest of the night. The most intense ten minutes ever. And it was actually, you know, that's that's ten sports minutes. So it's really like thirty minutes, twenty minutes. It was it was nuts, and that's part of like the noise at the end of the game. It was ten minutes of pure tension, and with the countdown, do you believe in miracles? Which is something I actually never heard him say until much later because I was inside the arena. Fred, what was it like after the game? Did it spill out into downtown Lake Placid? Was it just an absolute party atmosphere after that? Well, I mean, downtown Lake Placid is like smaller than downtown Guerneville, <laughs> but it, but it. But it it, it, yeah, I mean, people were just insane running around the streets. And then because ABC TV had the game on tape delay, they didn't show it live that night. They showed it on tape delay to the rest of the world. Everybody kind of ran to a television to see it again. Everybody wanted to watch it again. Yeah, why not? Why not? Good yeah. call, Fred. The good stuff, man. I, I don't know that I've ever talked to anybody that was at that game. I think that's yeah, a first old. for me. <laughs> no, I it was, you know, it was in New York. I grew up in California. It was tape delayed. I remember hearing rumors at school today that there were or that day that there was a big upset and I came home and I watched it on tape delay on um you know, I think it was on ABC with um, yeah. Jim McKay was the host of the Olympics and then it was let's go out to Lake Placid and watch the USA versus Russia. Here's Al Michaels. And you're that's just right. like, yeah, and you're just like, okay, and you kind of heard but you didn't know there was rumors about it. And then it's like, because there was no social media. There was no, nobody right. knew. It was just like, but by the time we as a country saw it, it was already, or I, I think something like that, or maybe it's because we're on the West Coast. It was delayed a little bit. Something, something weird. I knew it was on delay. Yeah. All right, Fred. Good stuff, man. A plus call. Way to go. Uh, Ralph, right. I'm going to take a quick break here. Top of the hour. If you're on hold right now, the topic is if you're just jumping in your car and you're driving around tonight. Uh, the topic is who cares about Thursday night football? Uh, the Phillies are going to the NLCS. They beat the Braves tonight. And I'm just reminiscing about how much, I am guess maybe whining even, about how much I miss playoff baseball and how much it's, it's what Octo- it's what baseball's all about. October baseball. The fans in Philadelphia right now, the atmosphere, you guys know it. You lived it three times in 10, 12, and 14. What is your moment as a fan when you just absolutely blacked out, when you lost your mind. Because that's what's going on in Philadelphia right now. They're all losing their minds. They're singing songs. They're going nuts. There's crescendos on home runs. Maybe we'll play some of these soundless, broadcasterless home runs when we come back. 808 KBR is the number. We'll take your calls next on the Sports Leader.
KNBR on Facebook. This is KNBR Tonight with F.P. Santangelo on KNBR 1045 and 680. The, the sports leader. Sports leader. Full phone lines right now. 808 KNBR. The topic at hand tonight. We're a short time together here till 10 o'clock. I mean, you just came out fire and damn, I miss October baseball. And watching what the Phillies did tonight, and they're they're the team right now. I mean, the Diamondbacks, they got momentum. Boach's team's got momentum. Dusty's team, obviously, they're still playing. But the, the, the Phillies have the thing going on. They have it. And that's usually what you need to get past the tough moments, to get past the, the NLCS, to win a World Series. You all, When you have the speech at City Hall after the parade, Everybody knows they sing the song together. The teams that win have the pearls or their baby shark or whatever it is. There's always something, something that, that kind of takes it to a, a magical level. And October baseball, for lack of a better term, is magical. And I miss it. So I came on tonight saying, damn, I miss October. The Giants have to get back to the playoffs next year. Like, let's go. I, I, I want to see this. I'm whining. I know it, but it's coming from a great place. I want to see October baseball again. I miss October baseball. I miss the champagne in the locker rooms. I wish you could all experience that. You probably see it and go, what are they doing? They're just idiots. No, it's unbelievable. Just, I mean, and I'm sure maybe a lot of fans did it in their kitchens when the Giants won in 10, 12, or 14, or did it in their backyards, or did it in the shower. I, I remember one of my buddies sent me a video when the Nationals won the World Series. He was in his shower, and he's pouring champagne on his head. I'm like, he get in your shower, dude. You, just gotta, you gotta mop up the floor after. It's a world championship. What are you doing? You don't take any shortcuts. Uh, so, yeah, 808 KMBR, full phone lines right now. The text line, the Golden State Lumber and Building Materials text line is absolutely lighting up right now, just like the phones. You guys are the best, man. We got an hour together. You're just all chiming in with great stuff. My blackout moment came at Candlestick Park. This is the 831 chiming in. For the catch two, Steve Young, Terrell Owens. We already had that. That's a good one. The wild card playoff game against the Packers. The real party began after the game. At the Gun Tower and Candlestick Park parking lot with a couple of Niner cheerleaders and my family. <laughs> that sounds kinky. I love it. A couple of Niners cheerleaders and your family. I think you, I need to, like, to, you, maybe you guys should reset some boundaries, is all I'm saying. Like, if you just had, like, Niners cheerleaders and your family. No, I get what you're saying. I'm just being an idiot. Let's go back to the phones. Uh, let's go to Patrick in San Francisco. A lot of World Cup on the phone lines right now. Patrick, what's going on? Hey, how are you? It's Patricio. I'm actually from Argentina, and uh, I don't have a story like Miracle on Ice just now, but I do have a story which is really important for Argentines. In 2014, I went to Rio de Janeiro to see the final of the World Cup, where Argentina lost to Germany 1-0. In December of last year, I also went to Doha in Qatar, and I was in the stadium when Messi lifted up the third World Cup and we beat France in penalties. And that was my blackout moment. I think I might have had three or four heart attacks. I think I might have changed my diapers like four or five or six times. I had no voice for a week. And I, when we, when we finished and we won, I sat down and cried for half an hour. Oh, I love the emotion. Patrick, what, uh, what accent are you sporting right now? It's beautiful. I'm, I'm Argentine, so I speak Spanish, and the name is Patricio. <laughs> Patricio. Oh, my gosh. that's a It's a very romantic accent, man. You can call any night. You can call just talk yeah, about, yeah. like, I don't know, like just read the menu or something from Denny's when you come. <laughs> that's great, Patrick. Thanks, dude. Thanks for uh, reliving the memories. This is what this is all about. I appreciate it. Exactly. I wish the Giants would uh, would come back again. I really miss the postseason as well. So. Dude, I, I cried when they won the World Series. I was on the air, and I said from Will oh. Clark to Willie Bays to Willie McCovey, I had all these names written out. And I was reading them, and I just got all like my voice was shaky, and I was crying. I had to like oh I had to tighten it up, man, for for the radio's yeah. sake. But I had to pause because my voice was shaking. I was crying. Uh, growing up yeah. a Giants fan, man, they'll never be anything like the first one. They could win four in a row the next four years, and nothing's going to be like 2010 ever. Exactly. Nothing. Yeah. All right, Patrick, yeah. good call, man. This is great. I'm glad I. I thought of this subject on the fly. Sometimes I'm better when I don't plan the show. Let's go to Joe and run our Joe. These hour shows, I just show up and flip the switch. I don't care if anybody knows. Joe, you're on KMBR. What's okay. going on? Oh, hey, FP. Uh, great, uh, great talking to you. I'm uh, calling about, I remember, I agree with you about the, the missing missing it. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 2010 series was incredible. It was a beautiful night. I was in San Francisco at a, a 
a restaurant bar on Chestnut, and, I'm sorry, Scott and uh, Lombard, and people were just going nuts. Afterwards, there was, there was, we had champagne flying around, and there was people jumping on cars, jumping off roofs. There was, was there were some fires in the street, if I remember right, on 3rd yeah. Street. I think people were making, like, bonfires at intersections with, like, crates and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, it really was not. I, ne- I, I never have understood. Never, I think Sanford. Sorry to interrupt, Joe, but I, I yeah, never understood not. like destroying your city because you won. Like Giants fans didn't do that. There was a couple like little bonfires, but like the cities yeah. that like like go nuts and like ruin their city because they won. That makes zero well, I, sense no, to me. Out, out of control. I mean, I I remember. I've been a Giants fan for like a hundred years, and when I was a kid, um, they were they were awful, and we'd sit a candlestick in front of maybe five when they were at an all-time low, 10,000, 5,000, 10,000 people, they were horrible. And when I dreamed about a, a World Series um, championship parade on Market Street, and when it happened, it was just like a week of, of just, you know, euphoria. And I just think the Giants, I don't know if I just want to say, I feel like the, the, they have to have the Eddie DeBartolo win at all costs I mean, whatever it takes to get back there, like you said, you know? Yeah, whatever it takes, man. The manager, the players, let's go, man. Whatever it takes. Because the division ain't getting easier. It's only getting harder. No, it's not. And, 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 and I feel like I don't know the bottom line, FP, but it's like, the, you know, when they won in 10, 2010, 12, and 14, if I remember right, two things. They weren't, they were, during the season, they were not necessarily the best teams, but they peaked at the right time. That's everything. Right and they did it. And you're, you're, play, you're playing meaningful games into the playoffs. How about this? This just popped into my head, Joe. Let me know what you think. It, mm-hmm. it, Bruce Bochy's team had a tough loss on the last day of the season, and they became a wild card as a division winner. Division win, Winning the division doesn't mean anything. It's almost like a penalty now. If I'm a manager, what... What if I'm tied for the division lead on the last day of the season and I run out like my C lineup because I don't want to win a division? I'd rather play in the wild card. Do you think it'll ever get to that? Because it's almost advantageous not to win your division, play in the wild card, win the wild card, and then move on. And it's not just a one wild card game anymore where it's a coin toss. It's a series, two out of three. You got to win. And, and if it's right. in your ballpark, I would think, like, right. screw the division. I want to be in the wild card. And it shouldn't be like that. But. It, it might be a strategy were, moving forward. Well, you you were right about the base. It, it's a it's a chemistry kind of you know flow. And a week off, come on, man, the guys started getting stale and rusty. And so you might be right. They because they won that with uh, in the wild card. They no one nobody predicted them to even go to the World Series, much less win it. So that's why it was like you said, it was really really special. And you're right about having that whole week off it's too much time it's too much time baseball is a rhythm sport it's an everyday sport it, it's a timing sport it's a momentum sport i think more than most all right joe good call thanks man Thank you. you guys Thank have been outstanding let's go lewis in richmond lewis or louise hey, how you doing or louise hey uh i called once before before about Mays and mccovey because uh, i'm that old but uh, i have another not quite that old story for you and it doesn't have to be the world series or playoffs before the wild card scenarios it was excruciating the last week like in 2001 when you're building up oh. you're so drained in the last week of the season drain 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 and i saw one that was in the era of the Brian Johnson home run, but it wasn't that. I think it was some catcher who named Pruitt, and I think he won a game with a double in like the twelfth inning of a game that went back and forth and back and forth, and and he hardly had any career at all, and he had this huge hit, and the whole stadium. Uh, I guess it was it was definitely before before it was candlestick, and the whole stadium, no matter what the nighttime temperature was, was just delirious. Just the whole stadium was delirious. Uh, marching out of that stadium and uh, you know cruising it was just it was just that was my most delirious moment i haven't had that kind of luck in playoffs unfortunately I've seen losses so that's my delirious Dude, moment. there's no doubt and this is no slight against oracle park that a full candlestick beats a full oracle for for i, I, I like just um the noise level like there was, yeah, nothing, was there was nothing like a full park at candlestick and somebody hits a home run full park at candlestick there's a touchdown that, I don't know if it was just the acoustics of it or whatever, but that place is, was way louder, way louder. 
Yeah, I think they sat, sat maybe in the playoffs 55,000 or something like that, and it got loud. And like I said, we were all – there were no Dodgers there or anything. We were all delirious. And, and, and it was like probably second to the Brian Johnson home run in terms of delirious uh, Giants games of that era in the regular season. And like I said, it might have been the third to the last game of the season. It was just so must win. You could not believe it. And so hey, that was my moment. Good moment, Lewis. I love it. We're going down memory lane. If you're just joining the show and you're just jumping into your car, I just came on here and it just hit me like a ton of bricks when I flipped the switch. I was Well, actually, it was before I was talking to Raph. I'm like, I miss October baseball. Like, I miss being around October baseball. There's nothing like it. What's going on in Philadelphia right now triggered me, like, big time. Like, damn it, we need that on the corner of 3rd and King. We need Giants fans singing in unison again. We need spilling out of the ballpark into Willie Mays Plaza and going, this is the greatest thing, and we're singing again. We need the, the contact high of everybody getting stoned in Willie Mays Plaza again. Whatever it is. When I was doing the pregame show, getting hit with a bra on the back of the head mid-sentence on live TV, we need that again. Like We need that feeling. We want that feeling. Who cares if the Dodgers win the, the division next year? Who cares? Get in the playoffs and win the World Series. Our goal is to win the World Series. We don't care if we win the division. Can you imagine if your general manager or president said that? They should. We don't, what? Care. we don't care if we win the division, but we care if we win the World Series because if you win the division, guess what? You're one, two, barbecue. See you later. One, two, three, barbecue. See you later. Let's go to John in San Francisco. John, you are on KNBR. What's going on? Hey, I just had a question for you, kind of tying in all this. Um, I'm a brave fan transplanted here in San Francisco. And I'm telling you that losing again in the playoffs, I, you guys hit it right on the head where you're, you've got a week off, you score one or two runs. You're, you're not going to, you're not going to win a series like that. Your pitching could be stale. You're getting shelled. I'd, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather not go to the, the postseason, if it's going to be like that, but then part of me goes, wow, am I being a selfish Braves fan? Or am I saying to myself, hey, I'm in it to win the World Series, like you were saying. So everything else is just irrelevant. I think. You know, John, here, here's the thing, John, like winning the division is a true test of consistency, of grinding it out, and having a better roster than anybody. It, it, it might even be harder to do and more of an accurate test on what kind of team you have. But then you get into October baseball, and, and, and it's momentum, it's breaks, it's luck, it's whatever, it's your fan base, it's your, it's your region getting behind you. And nobody ever sings songs during the season when you're winning your division. Nobody ever tailgates and does all the special things you do in October. So, like, even though from a baseball player standpoint, knowing what the grind's like and getting in at 2 in the morning and getting to bed at 4 in the morning and getting up and playing a day game the next day and all the travel and all the mental anguish you go through, the anxiety about am I playing, am I getting hits, am I getting sent down, am I getting released, am I getting traded, you know, going 0 for 4, giving up six runs in the first, all that stuff you go through. I mean, it, it, it's quite an achievement to win a division. So here's my point. You shouldn't get penalized for that. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be penalized for being great for six months. In, in the teams that weren't as great as you, are, are, I guess, air quotes, penalized because they have to play a wild card series or they have to play meaningful games in the last two weeks of the season. They have the momentum. They just keep rolling. Like I, I, my, It's probably a lame analogy, but like if you win a division, you're sitting at a red light and you're waiting for the light to turn. You're getting pissed because the light's taking so long. And you know that car that just comes right by and it turns green where the car's about 10 feet from the, from the crosswalk and he just blows you away and keeps going? That, that's, what, that's what a wild card team is compared to a team that won the division. It's like a drag race, and you've got you're sitting there waiting for the light to change, and a car in the lane next to you already has 40 feet at 60 miles an hour. It is. Coming down the, it, it, it's it's yeah. disadvantageous to win a division right now, and baseball's got to. Oh, I okay. don't I don't have the solution on on live radio to think about what yeah. they could do, but I, it, they have to tighten this up. I don't know how they do it, but they have to tighten it up. I agree. I agree. Thank you for your call. All right, Thanks John. Thanks for letting me call in. Thanks, man. Uh, right. Let's go to uh, Rob in Santa Clara. Rob, you're on KNBR. Uh, I just wanted to share my uh, my story about the Sharks hockey. Uh, they were playing the Vegas Knights in the first round of the playoffs. And uh, 
I think they were down by two or three games. Vegas only had to win one more to win the series. Uh, you know, they, they just clawed their way back and clawed their way back. And, you know, the, the, the six, game six, Hurdle got a breakaway, a shorthanded goal, won the game in overtime. Uh, the final, or the uh, game seven in San Jose, which we were at, uh, uh, 10 minutes left, they were down by three goals. Joe Pavelski gets slammed to the ground, blood coming out of his ear and everything. They get a five-minute major on Vegas. Tennessee scores four goals when they were it was down three nothing. They scored four goals, and at that point, everybody just going nuts, just going nuts. And then Vegas ties it up with 15 seconds left. Then they go into overtime, and uh, Eric Carlson scores the game-winning goal, and that, it just like the roof came up. We were screaming, everybody was yelling. And I, it's like I had an out of body experience. <laughs> I've been, I know that feeling, dude. I almost, like I said, recapping, I almost blacked out in the stands. Like I was cheering so loud for so long that it's like when you blow up the, an air mattress or a raft. And I just thought I was going to, I was going down. Stopped. And I looked around and I go, everybody is just going insane. I, it was just, I mean, it's something I will never experience again, I'm sure. Never know that. You never know that. No, you never know. You just don't know. But I think there's so much luck involved in being a sports fan to be at these moments because even if you're a season ticket holder, I mean, just to be in the right place at the right time to experience these things. And it's almost like a community kind of thing where you're hugging strangers and you're loving strangers. And then you go out with to a bar afterwards and, and you're hugging strangers and you're having drinks and you're ripping shots and you're making friends. It just brings a town or a region together. Like, there's nothing like winning in the playoffs, whether it's hockey, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whether it's baseball. But I think with baseball, it's a little bit different because it's there's they're series. And there's, there's you know, it's just like, I guess I guess there's series in, in basketball, too, and, and there's series um, in hockey, too. But something about baseball, and maybe it's just because I'm biased, um, I just I just miss the playoffs. I miss October baseball. It hit me like a ton of bricks tonight watching the Phillies clinch. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an A's fan, and I really miss the playoffs, man. Well, I, you're going to miss it for a long time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, for the rest but, of your life, maybe, because they're moving. Yeah, but I tell you what, I've watched that game about 100 times. That game seven, I would never stop watching it. But it's like you said earlier, those kind of games will pull you out of anything. You just, you know, you want to watch those games. You want to, you want to, it, it will uplift you out of anything. It will, dude. It will it'll, it'll yep. put a smile on your face on a rainy day. Yep. Thanks, Rob. Thanks for the call. Does, it, does anybody else watch games and you know the outcome and you think it's going to change? I wonder what the psychology to that is because I do that all the time. It'll be like an a ESPN classic or something. Or they'll just they'll just play like, I don't know, on an MLB network, they'll play an old game from the past. And I know the outcome, but I'm, I'm thinking it might change. Like what, what is, I wonder what the psychology of that is. Or I'm just, I almost said bat S on the air. I swore the other night, Ralph, you missed it. I dropped an a-hole in the air. We dumped it. Yeah, it's the first time ever. I've been in broadcasting for like almost like 17 years, something like that. It's the first time I ever swore. <laughs> yeah, and not a drop of alcohol. Stone cold sober. Nothing. Not that I ever do, but like some nights I'll have a beer before I come on. Let's go to uh, Danny and Campbell. Danny wants to talk about his dubs moment. Man, FP, I am a uh, baseball romantic like you are, but I'm also a big Warrior fan, and the one game I happened to go to that season was against the Kings when Clay Thompson drops 39 in nine minutes on the Kings. And you're talking about like a blackout moment where everyone's everyone's family and they're just going crazy. Oh my God. Like that was like, he didn't miss. It was, it was the most crazy thing. I think I've ever seen in sports. It, 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 I like the moments when you're cheering because it's amazing, and as you're cheering because it's amazing, something more amazing happens, and then you go to another level, and you're just like, they're like the, and, and then that's... It became too much. Right? And you're just like, oh, my God, I'm going to pass out. That's why, see, these are the moments we live for, and that's why, I mean, not to get too dramatic here, too deep, that's why Giants fans get so pissed off. When they, it's not like they're pouting because they not get what they want or they're spoiled. I think there is something to that. Like if I'm being honest, but like we we miss that feeling 
uh, just like me coming on the air tonight, missing October baseball. Giants fans miss October baseball. They miss what we're talking about right now. Uh, Niners fans got the playoffs last year, so we got our fix. The Warriors won it a couple years ago, got our fix. But the but Giants fans, if you're just a baseball fan, you want to you want to replicate all these calls we're getting tonight, all these special moments in your life, whether it was World Cup soccer, whether it's Warriors, Sharks, Giants, Niners, whatever it is. You want to relive those moments one more time, and you want to get that feeling one more time because it's emotional. It's to the core. It's the very fiber of your being into your soul of, like, why we're sports fans. And I'm watching the, I'm watching the people no, in Philadelphia, and everybody craps on Philadelphia fans, and I think they're great fans. I do. I think they're the most passionate fan base I've ever been around in my life. When they're winning, there's nothing like it. When they're losing, there's nothing like it. It's kind of comedy. Uh, the throwing stuff and, the, and, and being, being jerks, I, I don't approve of that, but I'm far, and I would say that's like 10% of their fans, like 90% of their sports fans, they get it, man. And they get behind their team and it's, they are willing this team based on the energy and the adrenaline in the stands that's, it's transferring into the players and they're taking the fire and they're making it burn for good and for them, for their performance. Like that's a hard ball of momentum to stop. That's like a that's like a cement truck going downhill from Lake Tahoe with no brakes on Highway 80 at one of those real steep grades. Like it's going to be tough to beat them. No, absolutely right. And uh, hopefully the 49ers will be in the Super Bowl this year, and uh, we'll have another one of those blackout moments. I might have a blackout moment after the show. I'm going out, but thanks, Danny. I appreciate it. 808 KMBR is a number. If you're on hold, stay right there. We're having fun. We're going down memory lane. Your best memory as a fan when you almost blacked out, when you just had this, the one moment, there's one moment that every fan has that you remember. You were there for this, and you were hugging people, and you were screaming. It all started with, I'm, I'm, I'm missing October baseball, and I'm kind of like FOMO. I wish I was in Philadelphia right now, kind of seeing what they're going through. But it's a special thing they got going, and we know what that is here. Of all the fan bases that you guys had three World Series in five years, you know what that feeling is? You miss it? I want to hear your stories next on the Sports Leader.
1 2. Drilled left field on its way. Gone! Into the second deck in left field. Nick Castellanos. Oh, brother. And it is 3 1. Absolutely hammered. And this place is going crazy. Nick, nobody in Major League history has hit two home runs on back-to-back postseason games, but you just did, and you guys are headed to the NLCS. Where's the question on that? There's no question. Well, thank, thank you for telling me. I, I thought you'd be happy with that. Uh, I am, man, but we got eight more wins. You're tuned into KNBR tonight with former giant FP Santangelo. Listen to us here and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We are KNBR 1045 and 680, the sports leader. Yeah, you got to have a question. Like when I do interviews on KNBR, though, it's more of a conversation between two people, so I don't always ask a question. But if you're doing a walk off interview or you're in, like, say, the clubhouse after, you can't just make a statement and expect somebody to, like, expand on your statement. There has to be a question there. <laughs> yeah? Where's the question? Play that again, Raph. re that when you get a chance. But that was the walk-off uh, interview with Nick Castellanos, who hit two home runs tonight. First one was on the curveball. Second was on a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. And his swagger is off the charts. His confidence is he's rounding. He might have one of the best home run trots I've ever, trots I've ever seen. And just the way he's wearing his uni right now, and he's got the third button down, he's got sweatbands for days, he's got the eye black on for night games. Just sexy. He's just looking sexy. To play it again. Nobody in Major League history has hit two home runs on back-to-back postseason games, but you just did, and you guys are headed to the NLCS. Where's the question on that? There's no question. Well, thank, thank you for telling me. I, I thought you'd be happy with that. Uh, I am, man, but we got eight more wins. <laughs> hear him singing in the background, the fans dancing on my own. That's their theme song. It was, did you hear how that went? That was their theme song last year. So they tried to have one this year and they tried to get a new theme song, the Phillies in the clubhouse. And whenever you have a theme song, it always leaks out to the public and it becomes everybody's theme song. And they weren't playing well this year and they decided to go back to it. And as soon as they went back to it in the clubhouse, uh, they started winning again. Almost Pavlovian, right? You ring the bell, the dogs salivate. Uh, it's just one of those things where if you have a song, our, in Oakland, we won 102 games, and it was uh, Fred Durst, keep rolling, rolling, rolling before the game, and it was One More Time by Daft Punk when we won. And it was just, it just you just, you get conditioned when you hear that song coming in the clubhouse and you're high-fiving and Daft Punk singing One More Time. Really cool stuff. And I remember, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the song. I'll think of it as we go. Let's go to Connor in Dublin. Connor, you're on KMBR. What's going on? Hey, FP, how are you? Good. How are you doing tonight, Connor? I'm doing very well. Um, I got to say, my uh, not necessarily blackout moment, but a pretty big moment for me was when Argentina won the World Cup because I'm a big Argentina fan, and I've been an Argentina fan, like, for as long as I can remember. And uh, so it's just a really big thing. It was a really big for me. And I remember just watching the TV as they made the last final uh, penalty kick, and I was screaming my head off. And my mom hated me, but I was it was worth it. <laughs> she didn't hate you. She wow. was she just was telling you to keep it down. I feel like uh, there's certain moments where anything goes as a fan. Like you could go bang pots and pans. Not shooting guns in the air. It's stupid. I don't understand. I never understood that in celebrations. But like you could go like honk your horn or light off firecrackers or whatever if your team wins. You should be able to scream. Tell your mom to lighten up, Connor. She's a buzzkill. Your mom's a buzzkill. No, she didn't do that. She no. she she was like, "What are you yelling about?" And I tell her, she's like, "Oh, nice." All right, that's and cool. She went back to doing. Who are we playing again this week? Yeah. Who are we who are we playing? Uh, me. Yeah, yeah. Who are we playing on Friday night? You don't know who you're playing bye this Friday week. night? Huh? Bye week. It's bye a bye week. week? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So that means you're gonna hey, party. Gonna you're gonna yeah, part. You're gonna party. I don't escape practice though, so I'll practice tomorrow like nine o'clock in the morning. You guys so practice two, before school? No, we don't have school uh, uh, tomorrow because of like we took PSATs or PSATs today. I took mine today. It was oh. really long and boring. Was it hard? No, no, not no really. you nailed it. No. Did you did you cheat? No. Yeah, no. don't cheat. No. No. You never cheat no, on your PSAT. Cheat on the SAT, but not the PSAT. You just don't want to get caught. 
on the PSAT because then they'll look for you on the SAT. But cheat on the SAT. Cheat. Yeah, you have to. I couldn't cheat even if I wanted to. I read to too many forms. No, you'll, you'll figure a way. It's easy. All right, Connor, thanks for the call, man. Tape the Thank answers you. to the person in front of you and to their back or just, like, figure it out. You guys you guys got electronic devices to cheat on. Oh, my gosh. It'd be so easy to cheat. I listened to KMBR and your night host was telling a kid to cheat. Let's go to Kyle in Vacaville. Kyle, you're on KMBR. What's up, FP? How you doing, man? First time, long time. Oh, uh, yeah, first time. We got to pour man, you a beer. So we got to pour you a beer. Hold on. We got a KMBR beer for you. This is a fresh batch. It's a fresh batch. All right. Let's take a swig. <laughs> I think this is called Low Tide or Zombie Pale Ale. I'm not sure. Oh, right on, right on. Made by my, zombies my that live on the... It's made by... Uh, it's made fresh every day by zombies that live on the Embarcadero. What do you got, Kyle? Right, right on. Hey, man, well, uh, when we talk about October baseball, my blood starts going, getting warm, and my heart starts racing. It's been some of the best years of my life, the 2010, 12, 14 years for the uh, Giants. But, man, what stands out for the most for me was that 2012 year when we were down 2-0 against the Reds after losing back-to-back at home. We come back, win three games in a row, follow that up with the St. Louis uh, Cardinals down 3-1, and then then we promptly sweep the Tigers for the championship. It's so great, and my man, and no one believed in him as much as I did, but Barry Zito was my guy. I always loved him, loved how he did, nice and slow. It was such a great year, man. Yeah, Barry Zito, I mean – that, that was everything. Have you seen that? I saw some documentary, Kyle, on Barry Zito recently, and I forget who the interviewee was, but it was really deep, man, and he was talking about how it, like he was really scuffling with being a giant and his mental health wasn't well, and he called his dad or something yeah. before that game, and his dad said, this is what you do. You love baseball, and his dad was always tough on him. If you, if you get a chance to watch it, it makes you look at Barry Zito in a whole different. He was my teammate in Oakland, so I was with him when he was a little bit younger, oh, with less pressure on him, and he was like f- carefree and going out every night and having a blast and playing the rock star, you know, good looking dude role. And then I think everything kind of changed sure. when he came to San Francisco and he had that big contract, and he felt like he had to live up to something that he wasn't. And then it's just, it's really, really, he's a very deep dude in this interview, and I wish I could be more accurate and tell you who did it, but just Google it. Um, it's a wonderful piece. And if you're a Zito guy, dude, you'll love it. Hey, will do. And also, if I remember correctly, in that year, I'm pretty sure they threw him against Verlander. Uh, and I think that was pretty much a, hand, a handover game for us. And I think he just he killed that game for us and really put us in a good position in the uh, World Series. And, man, it, it, it was just it was a really great year, great moment. And uh, just the one really fun thing I'll share with you was uh, every time we'd watch every game that year with my family, I was 16 years old, uh, we would all, I, I started this thing where we would sacrifice something. I would just start taking off a shoe randomly in one inning and be like, I don't need my shoe. The Giants, you know, we need the Giants luck all, you know, all on our side. So we'd be getting rid of belts, hats, shoes, everything we could to sacrifice with them. And it was a magical year. And yeah, I love Barry Zito. I'll check that video out for sure. Check it out, dude. Kyle, great call, man. I love it. Great. Well said. Let's go to Kevin in Fremont. Kevin, you're on KMBR. What's going on, Kevin? Yeah, um, this is the first time I've called you, and, and, and but I've listened to you for a long time, and uh, you're a, a favorite uh, host for me on, on this station. So I actually, you're the one show I actually listen to consistently. Thank um, you, Kevin. You know you get a free beer from KMBR, yeah. first time caller. Oh, this cool. is called... Uh, Low tide. Yeah, low tide. We make okay, it. Uh, cool. We make it out uh, of the gutter water here on Broadway. We just scoop <laughs> it right up. It's not Rocky Mountain spring water. It's from the gutter water, and then we we brew it with uh, leftover food from all the restaurants on Broadway. Great, great. Um, thank you. Um, I, the one moment um, as far as sports that really um, made me yell and scream, and um, I was actually had the privilege of. I'm a long-suffering A's fan, and um, I will always be an A's fan, even when they move to Vegas or wherever, wherever the heck they go, because I have no idea, uh, and I don't even think they know exactly, even though it looks like Vegas. Um, the one great moment, though, and I've been an A's fan since forever, since I was ten, and and so I had great years in the '80s. I had. Um, I was too young to understand the 70s, although my granddaddy read articles to me about all the players that got traded afterward. But I had the privilege 
of being at a game, and I was with my wife, and I, I said, you know, around the fifth or sixth inning, I said, you know, I know you're here just because you don't want to be a baseball widow and you don't want to be left at home all the time, but I would really pay attention if I were you. I, you there's something special about ready to happen, and so the sixth, half, sixth inning happens, the seventh inning happens, the eighth inning happens, and I said, there's about something I really believe there's going to be something that – I'm never going to be able to see again live, and neither are you. And it was Dallas Brayton's perfect game. Oh, wow. So I was actually at that game. Uh, I still have the ticket from that game. Uh, it, so being a longtime A's fan, uh, like I said, I was too young to appreciate the 70s teams. I was gra- grateful to live through, you know, be here for the 80s teams with the Bash Brothers and stuff. But my best moment of it all was – having the privilege of being at that Dallas Brayton perfect game. Very cool, dude. That was awesome. On Mother's Day, nonetheless. Yep. yep. Dallas is a good dude. I'm a big yeah. fan. Kevin, thanks for uh, taking us down memory lane. I appreciate All right. it. All right, thanks. Let's Bye. go to Craig in Arizona. Craig, you're on the Sports Leader. What's going on, Craig? Well, I'm an older guy, so I have uh, many jaw-dropping moments in sports. When, uh, when, uh, when, when, when probably... Adam took a bite out of the apple? That was that. Is that your, is that is that your moment? <laughs> uh, if I give you my top five real quick, I'd appreciate it. Go. Well, let's just go with your top one. Well, that'd be Fernando's No No Dodger Stadium, nineteen ninety, the ninth inning. I mean, we were bewildered. We were everything you can think of when Fernando we sat there on the seventh row from the field watching Fernando do his deal. It was one of the best calls ever, in my opinion. Vince Cully said, uh, if you have a sombrero, throw it to the sky. One of my favorite calls ever. Yeah, me too. It was cool. All right, Craig, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you chiming in tonight. Uh, right now, we're going to take a I guess we'll just end the show on the other side. It, it, we'll take a break and end the show. We'll play lights, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, coming up next, me on the Sports Leader.
Tonight with FP Santangelo. Now continue. Follow us on Twitter at KNBR. This is KNBR 1045 at 68. The Sports Leader. You don't care, then we don't care. Frank Menachino was in charge of the radio in the clubhouse. And in the beginning of this, he says, play that track, play that effing track. That's how the song starts. And Frank, every night, right around, I don't know, 6.30 before he took the field, he would be like, in his New York accent, play that track, play that effing track. And then we play it. And that was our song, man. That was... That was the one that kicked the greenies in. 808 KNBR. Oh, no, we're done. The show's over. It's like, literally, this is so dumb. What? This is really dumb. I mean, do the post-game show after a game that nobody cares about. Just give me these days off. Like, what are we doing? But next week, we're 6 to 10 every day. Thank God I get to talk to you guys for four hours. I was so fired up last night after the show. We did four hours with no guest. And, I mean, that's nothing for most guys. But whatever. I, I don't... I don't love doing a show by myself. Like, I would love to have another person in here and say, hey, what do you think? Yeah, I disagree with you. No, I totally agree with you. Let's take a call. But you guys carry the show every night. Like, this is your show. You, I guess if, you, if you're doing a show with a partner, you really don't need calls. I need calls. I want calls. I love you guys. Like, I love listening to your takes. And, with, and there's some bad ones, but who cares? You know, there's no such thing as a bad question. There's no such thing as a bad call. And I think a lot of radio show hosts are scared of bad calls. I, t I like to turn them into funny. I like to turn them into great. And it, I, you should never be afraid to call with your opinion on this show. You guys are the best. Like, literally, I go home, call my friends, call my son. I don't have friends. I call my son, and I just be like, you wouldn't believe what happened last night. And, like, in the morning, I'll call him. Like, we had this one guy, and I did this. And he's like, yeah, I know, Dad. My Twitter was blowing up last night. They said you were on fire. Like, yeah, I was over-caffeinated last night. I was. Raph, you weren't here? Oh. I, I drank, like, a double, two double espressos, and then I took one of these GNC energy pills, and I was out of my mind. It was a good yes. show. I was talking too fast. I was stuttering a lot, which happens when you drink too much, but uh, coffee. But anyways, uh, enough about me. What do you guys think about me? 808 no, I'll see you guys tomorrow, 6 to 10 p.m. We're going to have a fun Friday show for you. Uh, we have Matt Barrows coming on the show tomorrow. Who else, Raph? Who do, else do we got? Brian Peacock's coming on the show, so we'll, we'll get you ready for Cleveland. Could it be a trap game? Are we worried about Sunday? Or are they just going to roll, keep rolling, 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 rolling? 
The Niners are rolling. All right. Uh, thanks for all the calls tonight. We had an hour together, but it was fun filled. We all got to go down memory lane. I miss October baseball. I want October baseball next year. Let's get let's get in the playoffs and see what happens. And we all sing songs at the ballpark. Remember we were singing the song and Steve Perry singing the song. Oh, I want to do that again. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. I'm talking too much. Swing hard in case you hit it on the sports leader.